Greetings AP Calc AP students and welcome to our introductory video over a brand new unit, unit number seven, that's all about this wonderful world of the differential equation. A lot of really neat applications uh, involved with this particular topic that you're going to see very much at the end of the unit. Now to start off things, we're just going to kind of get your feet wet a little bit with what a differential equation is and what they can be used to model. So let's do a little modeling with our DEQS. That's the abbreviation for differential equations. So what I wanted to start off with here is just basically reading along with you some information about what this unit entails. This contains one of the most important applications of calculus, the differential equation. Oftentimes on the AP exam, one full-blown free response question could be devoted to this idea. A differential equation in x and y is an equation that involves x and y and the derivatives of y potentially. Now, our long-term goal is going to be to solve a differential equation, right? And a solution to a differential equation is a function that satisfies that differential equation when the function and its derivatives are substituted into the equation. That's a big focus of topic two and some future videos coming up. And then we can have two different kinds of solutions. One that can be a singular solution or we could have an actual set of functions, which is known as a general solution. For right now, all I want you to think of, a differential equation is very typically going to be an equation with a derivative in it. All right, our notation might look like any of these in the box. Notice that each of these equations has derivative notation, whether it's in y, f of x, or dy dx notation. And notice that we might not limit ourselves only to a first derivative. Each one of these has a second derivative in the equation. I'm going to tell you the ones that we solve will only contain a first derivative in this course. Now I've got a couple of little examples that I want to go through here with you, and um, I don't want you to get the wrong idea about our first example. Let's read it and then see if we can make some sense. It says a particle moves along a straight line. Its velocity v is inversely proportional to the square of the distance s it has traveled. Of these four equations, which one describes this relationship? I would love for you to pause the video and think through these options and see if we agree. All right, hopefully you've come up with a solution. Now, I've done a, a little dirty trick on you. The example that you have here, I think, is going to be the only one that you see in this entire lesson and in the future video that's not going to have a differential equation connection. I'm asking for an equation that models velocity, not the change in velocity, not the rate of velocity, not acceleration. And so your answer is certainly going to start with a v equal. Basically, what you're going to do in this problem is you're going to translate. So you start with the left side, which is velocity is v equal. Now, it's very likely that this word inversely bothered you, inversely proportional. You're going to start to see that a little bit more often, as well as seeing it directly proportional. Inversely proportional is just basically multiplying by the reciprocal of that particular value. And that value in this case is the square of the distance s. So you want to look for a situation where that s squared is in the denominator. It doesn't have to necessarily have a 1 in the numerator. It can have a constant of any variety. And because of that, your attention should have been drawn to choice b. Now, it's very often that a lot of students might think of choice D as the answer. That would be okay if I talked about the rate of change of velocity being inversely proportional. So we really need to look for those words. In the box here, I have a bit of a recap between the, uh, that helps you with the difference between direct variation and inverse. There are two ideas that you're going to see quite often. Basically, direct variation is going to be equated with y equal k times x. The rate at which something grows is going to be constant, basically is what that's referring to. 
inverse variation, a little bit different. In that case, you want to put the x in the denominator with your k in the numerator. So just think direct k times x, inverse k divided by x. All right, let's take a look at our last example today. Oh, it's about puppies. Yeah, who, who doesn't love a problem about puppies? It says a puppy gains weight, w, at a rate that is approximately inversely proportional to, whoops, to its age, t, and months. Write an equation that describes this relationship. Well, you don't have the benefit of your nice multiple choice options here so you're probably going to have to think about this from scratch and i would love it again pause the video think about what you would put down because this is where you can really struggle with this a little bit kind of use some of your prior knowledge and then check it with my answer all right here we go puppy gains weight w at a rate immediately you should recognize that as a derivative so this is not a w equal but it's a dw over dt and if you haven't figured it out by now these types of rates will always be with respect to time sort of like our related rate problems that we ha have in the first semester uh, definitely different enough but they still have that dt aspect going on now this is equivalent to inversely proportional what that means is that you will have a fraction you can put a constant we typically use k as the numerator and what are we inversely proportional to the age which is t time i guess in this case and that would be the equation that describes this relationship and basically what it's saying if you're wondering in a real world setting here is that um, as the puppy gets older what tends to happen is that their weight increase, the rate slows down a little bit, right? You probably if you've owned a puppy and from birth or, or whatnot, you notice that the puppy starts to gain weight really quickly and then it sort of tapers off. And that's really what this model is suggesting. Now, what can you do with this model? Lots of cool stuff. That's coming up later on in the unit. Right now, we're getting our feet wet with these ideas of modeling with differential equations. Our next video will finish up 7.1 with three more great examples. Stick around for those.